Hello there, welcome into the show. I must admit, Thursdays will never quite be the same without the illuminating presence of Bate Borisov. But Again! We, 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 <laughs> what is wrong with we, you? We, we, so will, we will struggle <laughs> on, uh, struggle on without them. <laughs> Paul Marin is here, Steve Nicholas here, Shaka Hislop too. Uh, we have Rath Honigstein waiting in the wings, but we'll keep him waiting uh, because the Europa League is what we'll start with. Uh, good night. For the two English sides, uh, great night for Valencia. Late drama for them to beat Krasnodar. Late drama for Sevilla, who are on the wrong end of it. They end up going out to Slavia Prague. Eintracht Frankfurt looking really impressive. Late drama for Chelsea? Against Inter. Yeah, not, not so much drama in the Ukraine. Benfica <laughs> also getting through. But let's focus on Arsenal. 4-3, they get through after uh, overturning that 3-1 first league deficit and looking pretty impressive in the, in the process, Paul. Well, I tell you, what was looking impressive. That's Aaron Ramsey. Yeah. I mean, and he's leaving the building. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Arsenal fans are scratching their head. I'm scratching my head. He's a box to box midfield player. That's what they need. He can protect the back four. He, he can create in the uh, the attacking area for you. Why is he leaving? Yeah. They had a bit of luck too, didn't they, Stevie? Yeah. Uh, so goal from... clearly offside. Shouldn't have stood. Yeah, they did. But sometimes you have to make your own luck. And the way Arsenal set about this. Right from the get-go, they went after Wren. Mm. Uh, Wren, for me, the way they set up, definitely played into Arsenal's hands. But when a side does that against you, you have to be able to take advantage of it. And Arsenal did. Mm. And quite frankly, for me, as bad as they were on the first leg, they was good in the second. The, was... the, the, the fact of the matter is, Wren aren't a, a good team, period. They're sitting eighth in, in Liga, and as, as improved as they have been under Julian and Stefan, I, I just didn't feel that this was... Um, a team that could knock Arsenal out, even though Arsenal tried their best in, in, in that first leg. And did recover and did ride, ride their luck somewhat. Arsenal's squad isn't all that deep. They're still fighting in, in, in two competitions. In this one, there's a lot of football to be played in the Europa League. If they are to, to, to get to the final or even back to the semi-final. Um, and similarly, top four in, in the English Premier League is there for them. So Unai Emery is going to have to ask a lot of a squad, including mm. calling on players like Aaron Ramsey, who at one point he was he was trying to use it as sparingly as possible. But Arsenal's still fighting on, yeah. on, on those two fronts. So other than Aaron Ramsey, who really caught your eye today? A lot of the big guns out. Abamagan, uh, Lacazette, um, Ozil. Well, I, I scratch my head on why Torreira d doesn't play. Mm. Uh, I, I'd much prefer him to Granit Xhaka. Mm. I, 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 look, you don't like Granit Xhaka. No, I don't like him. I don't, I don't know what he does, to be perfectly <laughs> frank. I mean, look, look. As the lads have said, going with a with a back three, with a back three that he had out there, I don't think they're great. Maitland now is really coming into his own as a as a young attacking wing back. I think he was terrific. Kalasinac was getting forward, whipping it in. So going forward, as, as Stevie you know said, they took advantage of, of, of the the gaps that Ren afforded them, and, and in the end, it was it was all right. Is there a little more resiliency now? I wonder to this Arsenal team having come Absolutely. back. Absolutely, you think so? Yeah, I mean, we've, yeah. to be honest, we've seen this resiliency almost from the start of the season. Probably the first couple of games, but since then, mm. listen, you talk about organising them, they know what they're all about. That, mm. That's what Emery has Arsenal at right now. Well, they move on to the quarter-final uh, alongside Chelsea and those two London teams amongst the top three in terms of the favourites to win the Europa League. And Napoli sandwiched in between them. Valencia rounding out the top four. Of course, so much depends on the draw, who gets who. Remember, the draw will pit all the teams a path right through to the final. But what do you make of those odds? Do Chelsea deserve to be the favourites to win this tournament right now, above, above Napoli and Arsenal? Not for me, no. I, I think Chelsea are bit behind Napoli and Arsenal. Just given what we've seen from Chelsea of late domestically, I think Arsenal have been more consistent and been the better playing the better football. They also have an incredible home record right now to, to bank on. And similarly, Napoli, second best team in Italy. I, I, I don't, I don't have Chelsea, given their inconsistencies, mm. um, albeit domestically, uh, as better than Napoli either. I, I, I kind of go the other way. Mm. I think I can't argue how how ineffective they've been in domestically, but in the Europa League, they've been absolutely sensational. He's made changes. Yep. They, they've looked comfortable. Uh, it seems like there's a there's a, a big weight lift get is lifted off the shoulders when they get outside the Premier League. So mm. I think the bookies have got it right. I, I, mm. I think on that on that point uh, that Stevie makes, it's about that he makes changes. Hudson Odoi comes in, young kid. Loftus Cheek comes in. Can't he plays in the right spot? 
you know, that, that's a team that is playing with freedom. Right. I mean, that, that's a match. Every, all the Chelsea fans want these young kids in. Outside bet, Eintracht Frankfurt. They look, they look pretty impressive, they, didn't they? They look, they look uh, very good against really, Inter Milan. Pretty really impressive mm. against, uh, against Inter. And guess what? Sevilla are out. You can talk about teams that have won the Europa League. They, they've lost in the knockout round for the first time in 21 knockout round ties. So it uh, means the field is open, doesn't it? For the, uh, for the Europa League. Arsenal! <laughs> the quarter... He's all wide open for Arsenal. <laughs> the quarterfinal draw and the Champions League quarterfinal draw reviewed on our next edition of FC. Now, the tale of the tape uh, from the Allianz Arena was. Uh, Arsenal! Uh, He's all... in Munich, wasn't it? Liverpool uh, over the two legs. We should say this is uh, out shooting Bayern 25 16. Look at the shots on goal. Bayern had two shots on goal mm -hmm. over the 180 minutes, despite mm -hmm. having slightly more of the ball than Liverpool and uh, more passes completed. The expected goals, uh, the expected reaction from the from the German press. Uh, you don't even need a translation, do you? All sorts of references to Deutsch disaster and debacle. Uh, Raf Honigstein is uh, joining us. The German media, Raf, is uh, seemingly taking this pretty well <laughs> by, by, by uh, what we're looking at. Uh, what, what's your sense of the reaction overall in Germany to Bayern's ouster? Well, you know, Bayern are the flagship of German football, and if Bayern um, can't really register any meaningful chances against Liverpool team that didn't even look all that impressive, um, I thought they were impressive in the sense that they have a mature, efficient control, but didn't seem to have to play at 100% to overcome a Bayern team that by the end of the tie looked very lost and helpless. So that was always going to reflect on everyone else. And because Bayern were the last team left in the Champions League, with Dortmund and Schalke already being eliminated uh, with high margins uh, of goals, there was extra pressure on them to perform. And I think the temptation is, is an obvious one, especially in the media, to make this a big story about German football being being quite poor and of course it does ring true to a certain extent but I think you have to always look at individual clubs involved and try to resist the temptation to jump to two big conclusions. To give you an example, um, no one's going to say now that Dutch football is suddenly better than Spanish football because Ajax got knocked out, sorry knocked out Real Madrid or that Italian football has overtaken Spanish football with Juve um, knocking out Atletico. So we have to look at the clubs involved but the bottom line is that German football represented by Bayern, by the national team, at the very top, has lost a little bit of its lustre over the last five years, and no one can deny that. But, Raph, sticking specifically with Bayern Munich, how has this happened? How have they deteriorated at this point? Because they have plenty of money to spend, am I, am I right? They have the money to compete with the true big boys. They're always amongst the uh, top four, top five when it comes to turnover, so the money is there. This year, remember, they didn't spend any money. They actually had a net transfer... Plus, because they saved all the money for the big transition that's going to come next season. And that perhaps is already the, uh, the genesis of some of the problems, that they thought they would be able to handle that transition without losing as much quality, with still being competitive in the league and in the Champions League. In the league, they still are. In the Champions League, I think they were shown up for being way off the mark when it comes to competing with the best team. And the whole construct, uh, a team that uh, wasn't freshed up, um, e enough this year and a coach who is very inexperienced has never been in Champions League before was shown up a little bit by Jurgen Klopp that was a combination was too much and if you want to have a bigger conversation and this is where we go back to German football the trend has been going downwards ever since Guardiola has left they're buying little by little on the player side with players getting a bit older and new players perhaps not quite be the same level and also on the coaching side, have left that little bit extra specialness that they had, which made them regular semi-final contenders. And th that deterioration, that regression, was brutally exposed by Liverpool yesterday night. What is next for Bayern? Where do they go from here? You talked about them perhaps living in a, in a, make, a, in a red and white make-believe fantasy world for, for a lot of this year in your article. Uh, so, so how do they address this? Do they address these obvious flaws? Well, I think it starts with being honest. It starts with being honest about the problems that they have in the squad, the mistakes that they made. I mean, going into a season with Rafinha being the only backup left back or right back, like he did last year, remember when he made a big mistake against Real Madrid in the semi-final, really came back to, to haunt them. So decisions at the top were wrong. Transition of the, of the squad needs to be stepped up. 
and crucially, they need to understand what it is it that we actually want to do. They benefited from a vision and from a philosophy over the last few years, starting with Van Gaal, then with Heinkes, then with Guardiola, and they were buying players to fit into that. Right now, we don't really know what this new buying team is supposed to look like, because in Kovac, we have a defensive, very cautious manager who seems a misfit with the kind of football that Bayern have been playing recently. So if they keep just adding good players, but don't really have a firm idea under Kovac of what's going to happen, the, the money's not going to help. So they really need to figure out, is he the right guy? And if yes, what is the kind of football we want for next season? And they have to buy accordingly. And right now, and this is why I was talking about the make-believe world, right now, I don't see enough hard questions being asked by the board. I see a lot of people thinking, we're going to be fine, everything's going to be okay. And I'm a bit worried that all that money, a little bit like Man United, you know, who looked so much better until five, six years ago, that they will lose their way a little bit. And I think that's a very real danger. Guys, no, no Bundesliga teams in the quarterfinal of the Champions League for the first time since 2006. It, it's pretty stark. Well, it's pretty stark, but... Uh, listen, if, if Bayern are the flagship, mm. then the flagship has lost its flag because they're just not very good. <laughs> right. and, I, and I'm actually interested. You know, Kovac just seems to be taking some stick. Uh, mm. and, and I agree with Rafa, you know... As far as experience is concerned, Kovac doesn't have it. But what's going on with the, with the two guys sitting up in the tower? Hunes, mm. uh, Uli Hunes and, and Rummenigge. Yeah. You know, they, they, they're the ones that are supposed to be giving their manager or their coach a team to put, to put on the field. Mm. And then they're criticising Kovac for setting the team up the way he did. Mm. What else was he supposed to do? These two guys have given him a back line that can't run. Mm. So you can't go against a team like Liverpool and go all out and attack. You have to be cautious. So these two guys, for me, seem to be getting away with an awful lot. Rafa, do you agree? To an extent, yes. Um, I, I don't necessarily agree that the back four is that bad. I think that's been overplayed. Uh, it comes to collective uh, defending. I don't think Matip is necessarily a better centre-back than, than Hummels, Boateng or Zule. And you can cope with that. But the issue is... They made a mistake. They made a mistake of thinking the squad was going to be good enough and Kovac was going to be good enough. And let's, let's not forget, he is there because the guys that they really wanted, they couldn't get. First, Jupp Heynckes, who refused to stay on. Then Thomas Tuchel, who decided a uh, PSG offer is better than a theoretical offer from Bayern that might never arrive. So Kovac is there because the guys they, didn't, they did want, they didn't get. And he might still be there because they still can't get the guys that they might want. So... You can blame them for that, I think, rightly, in not seeing the bigger picture and putting themselves in a position where they ended up with a squad and a manager where they feel it's actually not quite good enough. But the big change, at least on the squad side, is going to come in the summer. Mm. It's only six years, let's face it, less than six years, since an all-German Champions League final. And the year after that, Germany won the World Cup. Do, do you read... What, what many people are reading into this with the, with the no, Bundesliga or like, not? On, on the one hand... I do believe that a lot of these things are cyclical and, mm. and it, as you're seeing with the English clubs and, and fans of those clubs are, are, are now, are now recognising. But at the same time, you look at, at Bayern and their squad and you have to be concerned with, as much as you understand an ageing squad and you wanted to have a certain sense of loyalty to that squad, um, you saw the likes of AC Milan do something similar not so long ago it seems and, and how they have kind of struggled ever since. You just you don't feel that Bayern are going to go that bad, but you just wonder if, if you know history is repeating itself here. And we all watched the German national team at the World Cup in, in Russia. Thought, wow, that, that that's a one-off. But, but is, is there is there deep-seated concern? Well, think? I think I think there's got to. I mean, let, let, let's just talk about Bayern Munich for for, right. for a few seconds. I, to me, there was two aspects of the game. Number one, they were terrified of Liverpool on the fast break. Mm. And two, when they had possession of the ball, how, how do you nullify the opposition? How do you nullify Liverpool? You keep possession of the ball. And what they didn't have, they didn't have players that were technical enough and brave enough, A, to keep the ball and pass the ball around, to get to Lewandowski. Lewandowski was isolated. Mm. He looked as though he, he had no legs in him anymore. So the aspects of the game tells me that this Bayern Munich side needs, needs to be absolutely overhauled completely because... I totally disagree with, with Raf. I, I think that the back four, if I'm looking at Hummels and the lad alongside him, I, I'm telling the lad, say, get me the ball, whether it's to feet or spin over the top, because I, I think I can have a lot of fun that day. So I think that back four is a little bit wanted. Mm. Final thoughts, Raf? 
Well, I think there are, there are obviously issues and uh, they didn't uh, perform all that well. But let's not forget that this Bayern team, I think, is still a Guardiola team in many ways. I mean, Javi Martinez, um, James, Thiago, these are not counter-attacking players. So you have possession players, but then you had a team set up with huge spaces in the, in, uh, between midfield and, uh, and attack. And Kovac wanted his players to be really, really wide, so they were completely isolated and played wonderfully into, into Liverpool's hands. So I think the, the basic idea of Kovac was exposed as being far too limited and one-dimensional. And Bayern need to figure out, you know, can we actually make up that distance that we have? Because we don't have necessarily superstar players. Can we make up the distance playing that kind of football with this kind of team? And the answer has to be no. So something's got to change either on the team side, on the coaching side, or best of all, on both. Well, as they love to say, now they can concentrate on the league. Uh, Bayern, <laughs> Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund that locked together at the top of the Bundesliga on 57 points. Uh, Bayern take on Mainz on Sunday. Dortmund, a tricky looking trip to hurt the Berlin the day before. Now, in case you missed the news, the Champions League still belongs to Ronaldo and Messi. Uh, a decade plus on, Mark Ogden writing about it today in ESPNFC.com. Go and read that column. Uh, the headline writers, of course, agreeing around Europe. All the Spanish headlines uh, focusing on Messi's performance in Barcelona's 5-1 second leg victory over Lyon. The night before, of course, it was Ronaldo, his hat-trick at taking care of business, taking care of Atletico Madrid. And uh, former teammate, actually, of Cristiano Ronaldo uh, in a very public... Uh, WhatsApp exchange, which Patrice Evra actually released. This was Evra going backwards and forwards with Ronaldo before the game. Ronaldo managed to get a selfie into the, uh, the exchange, of course, <laughs> somehow. But uh, Evra releasing that uh, after Ronaldo's exploits. And then Lionel Messi weighing in, saying what Cristiano and Juventus did on Tuesday was impressive. It was a big surprise. I thought Atletico would be a lot stronger, but Juventus were all over them. And Cristiano had a magical night. Uh, as of the time we take the show, no response yet from Cristiano Ronaldo with a quote on Messi. Maybe that will be <laughs> forthcoming. Don't hold your breath. But uh, odds to win the Champions League now. We're down to the final eight. Manchester City stay favourites. Barcelona and Juventus just behind them. 10 to 3, Juventus 4 to 1. Liverpool at 5 to 1. And of course, now all eyes turn to the draw for that quarterfinal. Raf, we asked you to come up with what would your dream draw be in the quarterfinal. What did, what did you go with and why? Hot balls and cold balls um, <laughs> at the ready. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, just for a bit of fun, I thought uh, Manchester derby would be would be quite interesting okay. uh, at this point. Uh, I really like the idea of two of the younger teams, if you will, um, coming up against each other with Spurs and Ajax. Ajax in particular, so exciting. Um, Barcelona Juventus, I think, would be a lot of fun. The replay of the 2015 final in uh, in Berlin, and uh, just for Stevie Nichol, uh, my old friend, to have a gentle <laughs> passage into the semi-final, uh, going back to the team where they did very well against uh, last year, of course, where they had the, what was it, five nil in Porto in the first leg. Yeah, yep. I think yep. that'd be a good one. Yeah. I always <laughs> said he knew it was on the book. <laughs> always your favourite part of it on the show. Absolutely. <laughs> My favourite so, so you'd be happy with that draw, yeah? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I think every every single team wants Porto. Right. Or Ajax. Mm. And Ajax want Porto as well. <laughs> <laughs> they so, can't all have them. Yeah, but they, obviously they, want, they would stick out. Man United, Man right. City, my goodness. The odds are we're going to get an all-English tie. I think, I think yeah. the odds are about 5-1 to one against it not happening. So... Uh, I, I, would that be the one you'd want to see? Yeah, that, that, that would be the one I want to see. In my dream draw, I'd like the four favourites to be kept apart. Yeah, I see agree. those later later on down down the competition. I wouldn't mind seeing Ajax going back to Spain against Barcelona, where, well, obviously a different part of Spain, but did so well in, in, in the last round. <laughs> um, Manchester City, Manchester United, um, and then after that, um, mm. I'm not overly fussed about about the other two. I, Man United, Liverpool for me would be. If you're going to have an all English time, anyway, uh, I know you don't want that. No, I, I want, <laughs> look, it, it's impossible, like you say, five to one, that they're going to be drawn together, the English team. I'd like to see them be kept apart, but I, I right. think I'm dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. I, yeah. I just, for some reason, I just feel as though 
They are going to be drawn together. What, what, is there a dream out of those eight clubs left? One ideal tie where you go, that is... That is well, must-see in a quarter-final. Well, if you look, I mean, Barca, Juve, Juve, I mean... That, same, same as well. Final that, that, from 2015. Could be, could, I, mean, I mean, all those games could be finals. Mm. I mean, look, look, like, like you said, I mean, Porto, you know, maybe is the weak link, but you never know. Going there is always difficult. Well, or it used to be we, difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Barca City. Messi versus Ronaldo for the Barca Juve. In, 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 yeah, exactly. For the first time in those, with those teams. I, I, I just, <laughs> a little bit late in the competition for me. Right now, I, I want to see... A little bit early, you mean, yeah? Well, I, I'd, like to see, to... I'd like to see it a little bit later in the competition. For, oh, OK. Those, those two come against each other. So how can, for, how can right we now, fix it, then? <laughs> Warm balls. Yeah, exactly. Balls. Yeah, Raf had it all worked out. <laughs> right now, I I just want to see the four favorite kept apart, set the semi-finals up really nice. It's interesting yeah. when you look at the history of uh, what the uh, the eight teams left have done. Barcelona and Liverpool lead them all with five titles, Champions League and European Cups. To go for Ajax, are second or third in the list with four. And look who hasn't won it yet. Down at the bottom, at Manchester City mm. and Spurs. <sighs> The Serie A weekend will get off to an early start. We've got Friday football view. Fiorentina will travel to take on Cagliari. Fiorentina, as you see, in 10th place, but everyone miles behind Juventus. Let's bring you some action from the CONCACAF Champions League. Atlanta United had a lot to do, didn't they? 3-0 down at home to Monte. So the league made this a priority, didn't they, two or three years ago, to try and win the CONCACAF Champions League by spending more money. So they've got to spend more still. To be quite honest, if you're going to expect the MLS side at the beginning of the season, just after pre-season, to compete against the Mexican sides, mm. who are 100% fit, fully fired, it's not going to happen. Regardless of how much money you spent, you can't expect a team who's not ready to play against a team who, on a level playing field, would probably be better than them anyway. Mm. It's just not going to happen. Mm. It, it, it's a schedule issue. It always has been, always will be. And, and the thing about what Darren's saying is, is everything that, whenever you've been in that situation, it, it's sort of yeah. regurgitate the same stuff. It's exactly the same excuses. And, and what, what, they're not so much excuses, it's just being factual. Mm. Teams have come close. Toronto, penalty kick away last year. Mont Montreal made the final. Yeah, and, and again, to, to Darren's point, that is more... Um, that, that's not... Well, what you, you expect that that's the exception mm. um and, and as much as i understand uh the the mountains that mls clubs have, have to have to climb and and yes it, it doesn't make things easier mexican clubs right now are just better they've got better players and and again to, to the point because they're able to spend more money they also have a deeper history in 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 the game and, and in competitions like this all these things count against mls clubs mm. who are still very early in the in the learning curve mm. We have a full weekend of action to look forward to on ESPN Plus in, in terms of week three in MLS. Uh, again, you can see all games on Plus, starting with Chicago. We've just oh, killed him. All sorts of entertainment oh, championship, <laughs> isn't there? Uh, and, and it will continue. A big one, boys. Saturday morning, Yorkshire Derby, Leeds United and Sheffield United. Two teams separated by only, what, 20 miles and separated by only two points. At the top of the table, you can see that game also, ESPN Plus, uh, 8.25 Eastern. And yet more on ESPN Plus from the A-League. I know you've been waiting for this one, Paul. I have, actually. Perth Glory. Can they be caught? Can they be caught? I don't think so. Adelaide United are going to try and uh, narrow the gap for the chasing pack. That will be on Friday, ESPN Plus again. Now, that FA Cup podcast is back. I sat down with Paul and Stevie to... Uh, mine their knowledge of the quarter-final rounds that have got plenty of experience with that and beyond. You can uh, listen to that on the ESPN Pod Center and iTunes. Hot off the press, as they say. Hot off the press news of uh, Zidane Zidane's first signing, Eder Militao, Brazilian centre-back. Plays with Porto currently. He's only played one season with Porto. We're going to make nice, tidy profit on the deal. He'll join the Merengues in the summer for 50 million euros he only spent seven to sign him from Sao Paulo not even a year ago. He's played in all seven Champions League games this season. and made his national team debut in September. He will be playing at the Bernabeu. Shaka, one last order of business. Where are Real Madrid in your power rankings? They're, oh, not, they're not there. Quite simply. Yeah. Listen, a lot of love for Champions League this week. Again, following from last week, and you can understand why. 
I don't think I need a whole lot of explaining here. What? Are you having a laugh? <laughs> Why are Tottenham still in it? Because they're still in the Champions League. But they got beat at the weekend by Southampton. They're still in the Champions League. They've won one game in the last five. They're in the last eight of Check. the premier competition the one, in Europe. One in the last Why five. are you shouting so loud? <laughs> because he's shouting me, so I'm shouting back at him. Right, yes, now, last week, last minute. week, no Liverpool in. Now you've got them whacked up to number four. Yeah. Because they played a fantastic Bayern Munich side. That's, well, they're through <laughs> to the last eight. And why is PSG? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, there's one team that uh, goes against the grain. I needed a ten. Roll. I needed ten <laughs> teams. <laughs> so, you can give up so if everybody has left, I thought PSG was the best. Of everybody well, who's not, not there. It's not. Who do you have before PSG? Mm -hmm. Anybody. Anybody. <laughs> That's not there. <laughs> right. <laughs> You wouldn't have that. That was a good top ten. I don't care what yours is. Porto, the big movers. I didn't go without. That was a really good top ten. Until you get away with me. Y'all don't know good top tens when you see it. <laughs> we will see it tomorrow. All right, lots to get into uh, on this uh, extra time uh, edition uh, with Paul Mariner, Steve Nichol, Shaggy Here's Look, Raf Honigstein is with us as well. Raf, I'll throw the first question to you. With the with the draw almost upon us, do you like the new format of UEFA doing? All the draws at once on a Friday, which creates a set bracket. Or would you prefer to have a draw after each round, so you never quite know your path to the final, as it was done in the past? Yeah, it's, it's not a new format. UEFA did it for a time like that, then switched back to the round-by-round uh, round one. Now it's gone back to sort, sorting it out. I, I guess uh, drawing just for four teams didn't make a lot of sense, so I understand why they do it. I personally don't like it, but seeing that there aren't too many German teams involved, I think I'm okay this time. <laughs> Funny you should bring that up. We'll, we'll return to that theme. Do you, do you like having your path mapped out in a no, knockout no, tournament? No. You'd rather oh, yeah. you'd some randomness. You're taking a bit of excitement away from the draw. Yeah. I mean, the draw, the draw itself is always exciting uh, for <coughs> the supporters and for the teams involved. Yeah. So if you're going to map it all out, you're taking away a lot yeah. of that excitement. I agree. I agree it, even a draw just for a semi-final when there's only four, four yeah. teams. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's part of it. That's part of it. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Raf, back to you. Uh, Alex wants to know, do you think German football is on the decline? Germany flopped at the World Cup. Bayern and Dortmund out of the Champions League. Only Frankfurt left flying the flag. Yes, I think you have to say that Germany, German football has come off its high uh, around 2013-14 and has been going down. I don't think it's necessarily terminal. I don't think we're in a situation where we're now suddenly as bad as the Italians or the French, but we need to make up the ground and we have to make sure that some of the brain power that we've lost and some of the quality that we've lost with the top German coaches being abroad, a lot of top German players being abroad, we need to make sure that young players are coming through to make up for that because the loss of it has been keenly felt, I think, over the last couple of years. Quick follow-up question, Raf, from me. Is Robert Lewandowski getting much public flat for his performances, which have uh, tanked rather this season in the Champions League, particularly? Yeah, I think he is. But um, I mean, there is there is the tabloid sort of um, immediate kind of uh, bad grades, if you will, about him. But then people are saying, you know what? He's playing in a team that didn't create any chances, and he's not the kind of guy that's going to do anything by himself. Maybe Bayern need a different type of striker, but I think you can kind of understand why he's been so isolated with no one around him to really support him. So I think people are willing to give him just about a pass, but it's true that he should have done a lot better the last couple of uh, games. Stevie, he just hasn't shown up, has he? You could probably take it back further than this season, the last few seasons maybe, in the Champions League. Uh, I wasn't that impressed with him last year mm. uh, and, and this year, but. I kind of agree with, with, with Raf. He's the type of guy who you get the ball in the box. You know, you, you, you set yourself up to play from middle to front, yeah. and he's the guy on the end of it. Right. Because he's at his best, he's been as good as anybody. So I think it's a little harsh when you set a team up to just defend and you only end up with two shots of goal, then you're going to point the finger he's going to it forward. He's not going to supply those two. No, he can't. So how's he, how's how's he made to do any better? We, we harp on about, well, I harp on about centre forwards. Higuain, sometimes at Chelsea, when he's isolated in the box, surrounded by four defenders, you've got to get runners in the box to help these lads out. There was no runners in the box helping them out. No. Back to the Champions League draw. Stevie, uh, you've got to take this. If Liverpool have to draw a Premier League team tomorrow in the quarter-final draw, who would you, who would you rather see? City, United or Spurs? 
Listen, that's, that's rat's coffee, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. Uh, uh, wait, said yeah. We, said we, listen, you don't want City. No, right. We don't want City. That, Just because that, they're the pretty best. straightforward. So basically, you're saying, who do you want, Man United or Tottenham? Right. No. You don't want Man United because if for some reason you didn't win, it makes it twice as bad because it's Man United. <laughs> Because of the so lovely, that, because of the, the lovely so by default, <laughs> process of deduction, we are left with... By default, it's Tottenham. Right. Right. Uh, uh, Paul, uh, what is up with Chiellini? Have you ever seen a defender dive oh. and overreact the way he does? Well, we've seen it before, haven't we? I mean, he's not... Oh, no. Look, he's, 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 the lad's a past master. Look, look what, what is there not to like about Keeley? All right, he, he made a bit of a fool of himself the other day, but I'll, I'll tell you what, <laughs> if you're going into war with a, and you want a, a defender, he's your lad, isn't he? Yeah. It's it, it is, it is. It is. Listen, I love him as a defender. Right? Exactly. As a defender, that's embarrassing. Yeah. Watching him <laughs> springing around like a kangaroo. <laughs> Jeez, Skippy. Skippy, they tell you No, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll, I'll give you that. But I'm, I'm trying to ignore that and look at the defensive style because there's yeah. not many pearlers around these days. <laughs> Finally, the really meaty issue of the day for Raf coming from Mike. Uh, what does a German living in England do for food? I think, Ooh. I think Mike be insinuating mm. that the UK cuisine is not what it what it should be. It has improved Raff. though. Raff? Yeah, yeah, by the way, it has Jen, improved. There's a lot of I don't, German I don't live in England. Chefs, don't they? Go on, Raff. I don't live in England. I live in London. Ah, oh, okay. so oh, London, <laughs> big has, time has, <laughs> has the best food, the best food in the world. <laughs> yes, he does have a good point. He does. He, has a, he can't argue with that. <laughs> no. What are you talking about? It's a world cuisine city. There is so, nothing so you Germany, can't get in London. So Germany, right? You get Frank Fotters, right? That are pretty original. What else do you get in Germany? Bratwurst. Well, it's a sausage again. <laughs> it's different though. Right. Let's stay away from sausages. <laughs> What else is that? You know what I like? Ash, Ash, Very Ash. good Italian food in Germany. I don't know there was something here we could ask. Very good Italian food in Germany. I don't come rap. What? Italian food in Germany, you come. What? Yeah, German, because we're very German close food to in Germany. Germany. Mm. But well, Bavaria, I, the food is very good. Uh, well, North I'm, of Bavaria, less so. All right, a mate of mine just sent a question to me. Yeah. So can you ask Raf what he said? As bad as the Italians, how bad are the Italians? <laughs> oh, well, the Italians are, are bad <laughs> because they don't even make it to tournaments. Okay, we crash no. out, but at least we're there. <laughs> and, uh, oh, my God, that's a beauty. Yeah. So, great answer, Ralph. It could always be worse. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice indeed. Never got to ask Raph what he eats when he goes on holiday in England outside of London. We'll, we'll, we'll return to that. <laughs> We've got good Italians in London. <laughs> ESPN Plus.